Hello everyone, this is Leah from Manuscript Manager and welcome to our Associate Editor Searches for Reviewers tutorial. This video is meant to showcase the updated Search for Reviewer options current in Manuscript Manager as of March 2018. In order to show you these options, I'm going to log in as Associate Editor. Okay, here I am on the dashboard of our demo Associate Editor and I will go to the three newly assigned manuscripts. Here's the expanded list of the three newly assigned manuscripts. I'll choose the first one, manuscript number 102, and I'll click View Details as an associate editor would do. That would bring me to the Details page where I would have the manuscript and all other relevant information in order to get familiar with its contents and help me prepare for selecting reviewers. I would then click the Review tab page to initiate the search for potential reviewers. Down at the bottom of that page, I would click Search for a Reviewer, and this button would open a whole section that looks a little different than it looked before. Now if I scroll to the top, you'll see I'm still on the Review tab page, and the section I've opened up is the section where we can begin as associate editors to search for reviewers. Previously, this section only included the criteria on the bottom half, where we were able to search for reviewers by group, by name, affiliation, or expertise, by expertise keywords selected from the provided list, or by the alphabetical listing of reviewers by last name or members of the review board. What we would do before is select our search criteria and click search to generate a list. But now, in the upper half of this section, we have automatic reviewer suggestions from the database. There are three categories of automatic reviewer suggestions. The first one is reviewers that have matching expertise keywords. And you can access that list of three by clicking on the green button to the right. The second is reviewers who have reviewed or been selected to review similar or related manuscripts. There are 17 reviewers on this list and you can access the list again by clicking the green button on the right. And the last category is reviewers who have previously been selected to review manuscripts by these authors. This list contains seven suggested reviewers and can be accessed again by clicking the button on the right. But before we do that, just a little background about this new section. The quality of the results generated in this section are directly related to two factors. The keywords selected by authors and reviewers, and the number of manuscripts in the journal's database. The more nuanced the keywords and the more manuscripts you have in your database, the better the results will be in this section. You can read more about the search criteria for these results in the Read More section. But for now, let's go ahead and try to use this first option and view the reviewers with matching expertise. And by clicking that button, the three reviewers with matching expertise are listed on a chart where we have their name on the left, their expertise in the middle, and their reviewer history on the right-hand side. We have a wealth of information in these boxes that tells us a lot about the reviewer in question. The first item in the box would be whether or not this reviewer has any invitations to review that are pending. The following bits of information are the last reviews submitted by this reviewer to this journal and the dates. If you would care to see more detail on those reviews, you could click Review History and a new tab would open. Let me just show you with a little bit more detail about those reviews. And continuing further down in the box, we have external links to everything published by this reviewer in both PubMed and Google Scholar. And let me just click on those and show you how they open right up. That would be PubMed, and this would be Google Scholar. So in other words, you have a wealth of information at your fingertips to help you discern who would make the best candidate to review this particular manuscript. In this case, just as an example, I think I would choose Richard Scranton simply because he has no pending invitations and because the keywords match the keywords for this particular manuscript. What I would do then is in the select column, click the little box and click add selected to reviewer list. 
By doing that, we're brought back to the Reviewer tab page, and we're now able to see that Richard Scranton has been added to our list of possible reviewers. Up in this little gray area, we are notified that the number of reviews required to make a decision or a recommendation for this manuscript are two. Now that we're in here as an associate editor, we might as well generate a list of, let's say, double as many to be able to uh, quickly refer to in the event of a decline or a non-responder. So let's continue to search for reviewers. And just to move down on our new functions, we will now go to the reviewers who have reviewed or been selected to review similar or related manuscripts. Now these, these reviewers have been selected and put on a list by another associate editor. That does not necessarily mean that they have completed the review. They've been through a selection process like what we're doing right now. So just a little note about that in case they are on this list but they have no reviewer history, that could be the reason why. But again, we have some excellent candidates that are presented to us by the system. Um, the first one is currently reviewing one manuscript. Um, in this case, that's not too much of a challenge, but he is as good a candidate as the second uh, reviewer on our list. So for the sake of diversification, I think I'll just go ahead and choose the second reviewer and continue by adding that selected reviewer to the list. And now you can see we have two on the list and we will continue to search for a reviewer. And we'll go now to the third automatic suggestion from the database, which is reviewers who have previously been selected to review manuscripts by these authors. There are seven reviewers on this list. We'll just head in there and see. Um, at the very top, Let's pretend that this reviewer suits all of our purposes. We've reviewed the history and um, checked out her publications on PubMed and Google Scholar, and we'll go ahead and select and add the selected reviewer to the list. So now we have, in effect, three reviewers that have been automatically generated by these new functions in your database. We'll continue to search for a reviewer, and now we'll move down to the criteria we were used to using in the past. Let's say um, we can type a keyword that we know is associated with this manuscript and generate a list of possible reviewers that have that keyword as an area of specialty. Again, some of these names will repeat in these search results simply because these experts really do match the contents of the manuscript in question. But just for the sake of example, I think I'll choose a name we haven't seen yet, uh, Zoltan Farintos, so I can go ahead and add the selected reviewer to the list. And now we have four reviewers on our list of potential reviewers, three of which have been generated by the new search functions of Manuscript Manager, and the last one which has been generated by one of the older search functions that we've all been used to using in the past. The point being that no matter what search function is used, the names selected all turn up on the same list of potential reviewers here on the Reviewers tab page. Thanks very much for being with us today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy the new functionality of the Reviewer Finder section.